my short message. Thank you, musicians, and Sister Paula. We usually have Paula's angels, but the angels are absent. <laughs> it's just Sister Paula tonight, but she done good. She had help with the keyboardist there. Brother Brian helped her some, too. Amen. That's right. Give him a hand clap. That's the only pay we're going to give him. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read verse 2, or I mean, I'm sorry, verse 5 of Philippians chapter 2, and then you may be seated. Verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Would you pray? Amen. You may be seated. Before I forget it, I'm going to give another testimony. I, this was something I just couldn't hold in. Um, my wife and I came upon some money uh, Sunday. It was, a, it was a real good blessing. And uh, I don't need to go into detail how or where, but I knew it was provided from the Lord. We both agreed to that. And usually this kind of thing when it does happen to our family, it's in answer uh, to a prayer, to a need we already had, but we didn't have a need. But I was, you know, a, an immediate financial need, but we rejoiced. And the thing about it, that was Sunday when we were blessed with this. And Monday, we had some major car trouble and called and put the car in the garage Tuesday. And the blessing, the money that we unexpectedly came up with Sunday was just a few dollars more than what the car repair bill was. So I thank the Lord for that. Hallelujah. I couldn't have gone back to the bank and asked for another loan. <laughs> They told me, that's it, brother. <laughs> that's it for a while. So uh, now I got a dryer that works and a car that works. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. All right. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. I read to you verse 5, and I'm going to read that again, and then I'm going to the next verse. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who wants to have the mind of Christ here? Who, yeah, don't we all? Don't we all? Amen. So this brother here that's writing in the Word tells us some things that we need to do and attitudes we need to have in order to have the mind of Christ, to think like Him. Amen. And operate like Him. If I'm going to think like Him and operate like Him, I'm sure He's going to bless me. Amen. Amen. In my life. Verse 6. Now, he starts off after saying, let this mind be in you. He says, who, we're still talking about Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So, here was God, we know, came down to earth in the form of a man to be among us. Now, we all know that he came down uh, so that he could die on the cross and provide salvation for us. Because it was set up in the first chapter of Genesis that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for man. But that's not the only reason that God came down and walked among us in the form of Jesus Christ. It's not just so that we might be saved, but it's also so that we will know how to act and stay saved. Come on. How that we can do and be and instruct us, in other words. To be an instructor to us. 
And Lord knows I need instruction. And I'm sure we all do. Hallelujah. So he didn't come just to save us, which is such a great thing. There was no salvation outside of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. All these other cats that people are worshiping. You know, there's even a church out in L.A., California that worships Elvis Presley. No joke. No joke. They meet every week. And they worship Elvis Presley. They think he's God. That's a shame. That is a crying shame. Now, the next verse says, but made himself. Now, we're talking about God that came down in the form of a man. He made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. So what's that say to me and you? It says, if I'm not willing to be a servant, then I'm out of his will. I'm not in his mind. I'm not thinking like Jesus. I'm not having his mind if I'm not willing to be like a servant, to see how I can serve, how I can do, what I can do for not only the church as a whole, but for my neighbor who's not in the church yet, you see. If I can't be a good citizen, if I can't be a good citizen, Brother O'Donnie, I can't be a good saint. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap for that. That's good. I don't care who you are. That's good stuff right there. If I can't be a good citizen of the world, I can't be a good saint. That one's free, all right? He said, made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. And as he grew up, people's like, oh, yeah, that's Joseph and Mary's boy. Yeah, he's a pretty good boy. Yeah, you know, just one of us. Didn't, you know, he didn't come into the world as a king. He was a king, but he didn't present himself as a king. Or anybody special, in other words. And verse 8, I like this. And being found in fashion as a man, humbled himself. Now, there's two things in this verse that we need to pay special attention to. He humbled himself. First of all, he humbled himself. Now, we know from, and I'm not going to go and burden you down with a bunch of other scriptures, but we threw out the Bible when uh, humility is broken down, it comes about by fasting and prayer. Amen. And uh, I've said this before, and I'm sure that I'll go to my grave believing this, and my family gets tired sometimes, I'm sure, of hearing me say this. I don't want any of my family, any of my children, any of my grandchildren to have a prayer life. That got quiet, didn't it? And I hope you all don't have a prayer life. I want you to have a life of prayer. What really works, look at King David. What really worked for him? In one place, he said he, pray, he prayed morning, noon, and evening. In another place, this was after he was king now. In another place, he said he prayed seven times a day. So, you know, if I get in the habit of, of, of praying... Every time I get a chance, then when I'm faced with something, especially say uh, my neighbor asks me a question, why are you, why do y'all do this? Why do y'all dress this way? Why are y'all baptized in Jesus' name? Or whatever. I'll never be too far from a prayer meeting. Amen. And I can be humble enough to hear from him. So he said, being found in fashion as a man, verse 8, he humbled himself, the first part of that, and then it says he became obedient unto death. Now, that's, that's two, two parts. You know what? But the one leads into the other. The humility leads into obedience, even the death of a cross, it says. If I'm not willing to humble myself, it shows out in my disobedience. Now I'm going out on a limb here. And 
and, and I love every one of you. And I want to see everybody saved. But it just, I can't understand why some saints take two steps forward and three steps back. And they're all the time. I mean, I'm talking about people that's been in the church for years. Not just here. The other church I came out of down in my hometown of Huntington. Uh, just, I've always got to consult with the pastor. I've always, come on, somewhere there's a problem. I used to tell some of my in-laws, you know, you may need to think sometimes. It may not be the whole world. It might be you. If you're not lined up with the whole world, it's not necessarily the whole world's wrong. It's just like the woman that went to see the graduation of boot camp. And her son was out of step with the whole platoon. And she said, look at that. My son's the only one in step. <laughs> now, you see, <laughs> if, if you're having problems with everybody, then it might not be everybody. It might be me, see. If I'm having problems with everybody else. Come on, that's right. That's good stuff. It might not be everybody else. It might be me. Brother Randy, it might be me. I need to check that out. Obedience. I know that everybody that comes here to church isn't totally obedient. Because there's things... That I've heard the pastor preach. I've only been here, what, five years, Sister Hickman? We've been here a little over five years as members of this church. But I hear things that our pastor preaches, which are in the word. And people disobey that. And you can, if it ain't the pastor, it's the word of God. The word of God tells us to take care of this body that God has given us. Yet I look on, uh, I would ask for somebody for a, uh, show me a pack of cigarettes, but I'd probably get several of them right here, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> but what does it say on the pack of cigarettes? It used to say, may be, be harmful to your health. But I think now it even says it'll cause cancer. In other words, it says it'll kill you. So why do I want to keep partaking? And it says my body is a temple of God, so why do I want to fill it with smoke? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. That's good stuff. If you're having a problem with that, talk to me later. I'll straighten you out. Amen. I know because I had a problem getting the Holy Ghost till the Lord finally pounded in my head to throw them cigarettes away. Hallelujah. Isn't that right, sister? That's right. That's just one little uh, obedience. Maybe I'm not getting anywhere in my progress in the kingdom of God because somewhere down the line I'm disobedient. And I've swept it in the back of my mind and I'm not thinking about it. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Even in John chapter 14, and I'm not going to go there, Jesus tied the receiving of blessings to obedience. At least three times in John chapter 14. You can read it for yourself later. Verse 9. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. All of this other is an example why did Jesus have that wherefore? Why was he exalted? Not because necessarily. Now, he could have come down, the, the God-man, Jesus. He could have been sinful and failed. And I'm sure God would create himself another body and, and uh, went through with the plan. But he didn't. He was tempted in all points. The Bible said, just like you and I, tempted, but yet he passed the test. And because he did all of these things up to this point, God exalted him and gave him a name. The musicians can come. I want to close on this point. 
you know what? There's a wherefore for you and I. There's a wherefore for you and I. Someday we're going to get exalted. You know, I may not get the praise of mankind down here, but someday if you aren't ready to meet God, you're going to be standing watching this old boy's body go boom right up through the roof, through the clouds. I'm going to be up with him. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. There's a wherefore for you and I. If you're troubled in your mind in the least bit, that you're maybe not measuring up 100% to the mind of Christ. Or maybe you're just, think you are, which you could be, and it was just, life itself is just overwhelming you. I've been to that point several times in my life. Just feel like I was smothered by Satan throwing all this junk at me. Let's come to the altar. You know why? Because every one of us needs to tune up our servitude, our humility, and our obedience. Every one of us does. All right? So every one of you that will come and let's gather and let's have a time of prayer and worship. And the praise singers will help us out here. Because I want every one of us here to have a wherefore in our life. Amen.